Willie Wu, author of the Bitcoin forecast on Substack. It's a pleasure to have you here. You, of course, are very well known on Twitter as well as a passionate advocate of Bitcoin and one of the early pioneers of on-chain analytics. First, before we jump in, for people who may not know what on-chain analytics are all about, give us a thumbnail sketch. Okay, um, Ash, so like, you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, when people approach Bitcoin, um, maybe from another market, um, particularly equities, like they're used to having um, metrics behind companies that they're investing in. And of course, Bitcoin's a network. It, it doesn't have any of these sort of profit and losses and, um, you know, strategic quarterly reports. Um, so, like, but all we do have is this um, very visible um, ledger that's, it's, that's totally... Um, available on the on the blockchain, so um, this field is really grabbing the data on the um, on the blockchain and essentially dissecting it for signal. Um, you know, for example, you know, like if the if the price is going about to crash, you you can often see um, you know telltale signs like long term investors, maybe um, investors that have been in the market for five years starting to sell. And obviously those are the investors that have more experience in the market than the guys that just bought six months ago who are who are buying, you know. So that tells you something about what's happening underneath um, the market, um, underneath those charts that we see with, as speculators and traders, which is, you know, price and volume. Um, with um, on-chain analysis, you see kind of like an um, ECG of the entire animal of, of Bitcoin, exactly what's happening, the different um, facets of the network, um, what investors are doing, what miners are doing, um, what exchanges are doing, um, even what um, corporations are doing when they're buying or selling. So um, there's a forensic trail of um, the demand and supply <clears throat> in this entire market seen on the, on the blockchain. Yeah. You talk about this as almost an electrocardiogram of the market, uh, the ability to get a, a current state, a health check on where things are at. As we have this conversation here uh, at the very beginning of September, where do you see markets at right now? What are your on-chain analytics telling you? Uh, yeah, it's it's quite unprecedented right now. Like, um, you know, we're, what is it, getting on our 12th year into um, this network. And um, for all of this, we've seen this very, um, you know, cyclical behavior between um, bull and bear cycles every four years. Um, you know, the, the halvening um has had a lot to do with it. Where every four years, the 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 miners' um, reward gets halved, and therefore the amount that they sell onto the market um, is reduced by half, and that produces this sort of bullish impulse to the to market. So we're currently in this like um, bull market coming off a of halvening, and um, most people are expecting a bear market into 2022 because that's the cyclical nature, the four-year cycle of. Bitcoin compared to, you know, like maybe a 10-year cycle for macro um, macro markets. Um, but <clears throat> what's interesting right now is that right now um, we're seeing a peak kind of reaccumulation by long-term investors. Um, and, you know, whenever you see this level of reaccumulation by long-term investors, it's usually the fuel to drive another um, – bullish rally, you know, of multiple months. And so as we come into the fourth quarter of this year, we expected a, a, a very strong rally um, and then a blow off top. You know, that's the normal um, the normal expectation on the cycle nature. But right now it's like, wow, the, the data is showing that um, the structure is completely different from every other cycle. And um, if it's correct, then this bull market is um, not going to end um, next, like end of this year. It's going to go well into next year, and um, potentially there's a lot of evidence now I'm seeing quantitatively with this data to show that that four-year structure is breaking down. Um, so we were locked into this kind of four-year cycle, and perhaps now we're <clears throat> we're breaking free of the gravitational pull of this this halvening impulse and. Um, the demand and supply from investors and all the parts of the ecosystem are more predominant. And so in that regard, we might just continue to run up with these 
you know, um, typically 50% pullbacks, um, which isn't much of a pullback if you've been in Bitcoin long enough. You know, we're used to like 80% pullback over a year. Um, and we've just had one of these 50% pullbacks and, you know, a consolidation of just barely over two months and then we're off to the races again. So I could totally see that being the the more, um, you know, the more, more um, well, the, the behavior of Bitcoin in the coming years where um, we do this kind of random walk of price discovery as it finds its um, price at, at network saturation um, where everyone's using um, this network. So yeah, um, that's the most interesting thing right now um, to me. Yeah, I should say, as we have this conversation here on the morning of September 2nd, uh, here on the East Coast of New York, Bitcoin once again above over 50,000 uh, here today. You talk about uh, this as a very bullish outlook that you see, this kind of off to the races framework that you see as a setup. Give us a little sense, Willie, uh, beneath the surface, what are the metrics that you're looking at uh, to determine this and how are you extrapolating that view? Okay, it's a real good question. I mean, like when I look at the network, there's like, um, there's so many different metrics you can look at and they all get used in different parts of the cycle. Um, and currently, the the most um, reliable metrics are all the um, all the the views into demand and supply, um, both locally and um, in the macro sense. So, um, you know, I'm looking at a chart right now in front of me, and it's looking at what the long term investors are doing. And so, for example, you know, I work with um, Glassnode, which does the the um, raw um, on-chain data and they process it and it's a service that many people can use. Um, I pull that in and, you know, like, for example, like um, they do a metric called liquid supply and, you know, you, you can look at the, the blockchain, you can see the millions and millions of addresses, there's multitude of addresses and then they do the hard work of going, these addresses who owns them and they can cluster these addresses into like what looks like entities, individual participants of, that, that have their wallets spread across all these addresses. And then they um, look at the interactions between them and the historical interaction. And this, this metric is very, very telling because they can categorize the, the guys that, that buy. Um, they buy without selling, you know, like 75% of their transactions are more Bitcoins coming in, very few leaving. And then they have another category, which is liquid and highly liquid. And those guys are more speculative. Um, you look at their history and the, they buy and they sell and they trade. Um, so um, we can kind of look at that movement between um, speculative hands and long-term holders. And um, obviously, as all the supply moves to the long-term holders, guys that do not sell you create a cl um, huge supply shock um, and there's a there's a shortage of coins left by the speculators and the price just runs up and so that's kind of like a demand and supply um, view using their historic behavior and so that's one of my favorites another one is just sheer um, doing the same thing but much rougher like you say anything in in, in a wallet held by self-custody or cold storage those are the coins you cannot buy and the coins you can buy are the coins that are left on the exchanges. And you can run that ratio and you get the similar kind of um, metric. And that's demand and supply also. The, the supply is what's on exchanges and the demand is that that is held by investors who've got that locked away in cold storage. So those kind of metrics are, are the most telling and, um, and reliable because, um, you know, like, I mean, I, I cut my teeth using um, volume on 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 the on the network because that was a kind of like a proxy to um buying and selling right um there's a direct relationship if, if i'm going to um buy some coins off someone else they're going to send it to me and you can read that volume moving into my wallet as a um as a trade and so the more trades you get the more investors are coming in so you can look at volume as a proxy to the investment activity and some of the early stuff was like um based on that like um my first metric which was the first signal for um the first on-chain signal for for bitcoin was nbt which just ran the ratio of that essential volume between investors and um the market cap 
And so very much like price earnings ratio, you have the share price and how much earnings um, that company had. You can run a ratio of its valuation. You've got now in Bitcoin land a um, valuation, the market cap of Bitcoin, and um, how much investment activity is going, which is the sheer volume moving between investors. And that became NVT ratio. And you can see oscillations, you know, when it's high network um, activity by investors um, and very low valuation, then you know it's undervalued. So that's another thing we can do, but um, it's less reliable than this latest generation stuff, which, um, you know, it's, it's it, like the network keeps changing. And um, when you look at sheer volume, you cannot see, you know, like what we've seen in the last um, four years, a mass migration of transactions moving to um, behind the firewall of exchanges. And you cannot see what the investment activity is really happening inside those exchanges. So you're losing signal. And, um, and so, yeah, that, that's another thing around this, this um, on-chain field is it's con constantly changing because um, the network's changing, you know. We're now moving into an era where we have layers above the base chain, you know, whether that be exchanges or, you know, this the the popular the the popular thing right now is Lightning Network. So now there's a certain amount of transactions moving to that network that's above the base layer, which we cannot see. So those are examples where things change all the time, and you really need to understand what's happening with the network in order to account for it. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.